Well, hey, folks, if you believe Larry Miliette, you got to believe that his missing wife, May, chose to leave everything she knew, everything she loved, to go out and start a new life. And that would be a life without her children. It would have been voluntarily walking away from a million-dollar home and walking away from a high-paying job and her entire family. She'd also have to leave her bank account behind, her vehicle, and all of her social media accounts. Now think about it. Does this make sense to you? Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Profiling Evil. You know, a few days ago, I joined Vinnie Politan on Court TV to talk about Maya Miglietti's case. And we spoke with Maya's sister, Mary Chris, and her husband, Richard, about the missing woman. I hope that you'll just pause long enough to hit that like and subscribe button so that as we get started, you'll continue to get updates on all of the cases that we're looking at here at Profiling Evil. And you can go back and check out my videos on Larry Miliette, May Miliette's case, and this upcoming trial now set for September. Well, hey, to get rolling, I want to talk about one key piece of evidence that's been coming out that hasn't been getting a lot of emphasis. And frankly, I think it deserves more. It surrounds that recently released video, believed to be the last video of Maya Miliette just outside of her house on the day before she was reported missing. Now we're gonna come back to that video in a moment, but I thought I'd recap quickly the case from start to finish so that if there's parts of it that you've forgotten, we can bring you up to speed. So remember, you can always go back to my earlier videos when this case first broke. In fact, you might even want to watch the video where Maya's sister, Mary Chris, and Richard, her husband, joined me on the show to talk about their search efforts at the time. Let's go back and look at this case. And we're going to go back to January 7th, 2021, when Maya Miliette, she goes by May, was tired of all the accusations from her husband that she was having an affair. She may have been, don't know, but she suffered through what many have described as a loveless marriage. That day, January 7th, frankly, the day that we think that she was murdered, she contacted a local divorce attorney about ending the marriage. In a statement made after her appearance, her husband Larry reportedly told the media that he and May had a fight the night she disappeared. Now you might recall that a police search of security cameras in the area also revealed that there were a number of loud bangs that some have said could be gunshots. Now the following day, May, May is reported missing. And this is a critical period of time where May is last seen on Neighbors CCTV. Again, we're going to talk about that uh, video in just a moment. But on that uh, following morning, January 8th, at around 5 a.m., a little after, Larry Miliette is captured on video camera repositioning his vehicle in the driveway. Now, he backs the vehicle, so he pulls forward. He always backs in, it appears. He pulls forward and adjusts the vehicle and backs it in slightly inside of the garage, out of camera view. Now, it's unknown why this happens, but his attorney will later reveal that he moved the car so that he could load a couple of coolers in the car to take his little four-year-old daughter to the beach for the day. Now, here's where things get a little bit odder and this thing takes a little goofier twist. His attorney, Larry's attorney, stated that Miliette left the home sometime between 6 and 6.30. And I've heard multiple accounts. I've heard in court about 6.30 to 6.33 a.m. The vehicle drives out of the driveway. Again, the idea is that he's taking his four-year-old with him to the beach leaving the nine-year-old and the 11-year-old, I guess, behind to fend for themselves through the day. Now, he also leaves his mobile phone at home, and he's gone for more than 11 hours before returning. 
to me, this is going to be really interesting to see if law enforcement was able to obtain forensic vehicle information off of his Lexus. Since Larry clearly didn't leave any location information from his phone because he left his phone at home. Now, there is also testimony that he had another phone that he had hidden under May's bed at one point. So it's possible he could have had a burner phone that he was taking as he was traveling around. But all of this is hopefully going to come out in the trial. And here's the thing that's interesting. When he returns from that day away, 11, some have suggested even 12 hours, but I think it was a little more than 11 hours, he has the SUV detailed, cleaned from top to bottom. Well, it's only a matter of a couple of days and Maya's sister, Mary Chris, and her husband, Richard, begin organizing the first of many, many searches. Here's another thing that bugs me about this case, and that is that Larry doesn't participate. And two days later, during a vigil, he does speak to the press about what's going on. But again, he's not out. According to, to May's family, Mary Chris and their family, He's not out helping in any of the searches. And I've never seen any video to show him out searching for his missing wife. Now, Maya's family has never re, uh, seen Richard doing this. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen video of it. I suspect he might say that he was doing some independent searches, but I, I don't even recall hearing that. Well, the case kind of grinds along for six months. And by June of 2021, Lines are beginning to be drawn in the stand between Larry's family and Maya's family. And, and that is uh, obviously creating some additional stress because they're wanting, Maya's family's wanting to see the children. Larry's family's preventing them from seeing the children. Police conduct a number of search warrants starting back on January 23rd when they searched the Miliette home for the first time. About April, police seized guns and other evidence that belonged to Larry. And then the Chula Vista Police Department gets support from the FBI, the San Diego District Attorney's Office, and the Naval Criminal Investigative Services. And, no. and that's because May had a tie to the Navy because of her job. Now, in July of 2021... Larry Miliette is named a person of interest in May's missing persons case. And a judge releases two photographs. You're going to remember those photographs of Miliette's gun collection, including one, which is a redacted image of his four-year-old standing on the kitchen table, surrounded by 16 rifles and handguns. By September of 2021, May's parents petitioned the court for court-ordered visitation with the children. In those hearings, Larry says that he believes that May is alive still and that she voluntarily left the family, stating she'd done it before. I don't know if that's true or not, but he writes in the court papers, quote, I considered her alive because she voluntarily left our house at least twice in 2020 without saying goodbye to me or our three children we've been praying for her safety and well-being close quote well it's about this same time that the gun violence restraining order is extended for at least three months now the following month larry miliette gets arrested for the murder of his wife and he's formally charged with murdering maya and for illegal possession of an assault weapon he enters not guilty pleas, but he remains in jail today and will remain in jail until his trial, the judge saying he's a threat to society. Well, things move really slowly in 2022 as the Miliette defense team argues that Larry Miliette is mentally incompetent to stand trial. That says a lot in and of itself. Now, it could be because of all the stress of his wife missing. It could be things like guilt who knows but by the end of September in 2022 the court deems him mentally fit after he's reviewed by psyche, uh, psychiatric care and his preliminary hearing gets scheduled for the beginning of 2023 and in that preliminary hearing the prosecution comes out swinging building their case for a motive for murder and the first witness that they call 
is the divorce law office where May had to talk uh, to those folks on the day that she died. They testified that May did, in fact, contact them and wanted to talk about divorcing Larry. The next witness was May's sister, who testified that she witnessed infighting between May and Larry before her disappearance. And May's brother testified and shared text messages before her disappearance where Larry was regularly monitoring, according to May, her emails, her messages, social media, and all of her financial uh, activities. Uh, the, the discussion from May was that Larry was toxic and mentally abusive and that uh, the family started becoming concerned about this thing. As May said, Larry was concerned about her interactions with other men. Uh, apparently she worked with a team of men at work and he was jealous about that. In fact, on one occasion, May secretly recorded an argument that she and Larry were having where he accuses her of infidelity. I thought you might listen, enjoy listening to this video to get a sense of what's going on and her paranoia around what's going on. Videos in court today in the murder case against Larry Miliete that have never been seen before by the public. Larry Miliete is charged with killing his wife, Maya. As CBS H's David Gofferson reports, day nine of the preliminary hearing began with a video Maya recorded. Really? Maya Miliete secretly recorded the video in October 2020, capturing audio of an argument between herself and her husband, Larry Miliete. In the audio, you can hear Larry accusing her of an affair. What would you guys be going to set up at your plan that whole time in your projects and your team projects, mentoring and all that stuff? So after all this stuff that you're accusing me of, and this is this is exactly why. This is and then mentoring this, stuff. This is this is you said this wasn't going to happen. No, and yeah. it still happened. No, during the argument, Maya alleges her husband wanted her dead. You know, you guys got really close together on your desk, or is right here, or is. Always together, you know, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night. And then you start feeding stuff. So that's enough for you to wish death on me all the time? Oh, that's enough that you know that you gradually had an affair since December. On the witness stand, DA investigator Matthew Grindley testified the video demonstrates Larry Miliete's controlling behavior over his wife. She wanted to leave Larry. She did not want to leave her kids. She did not want to leave her life that she had built, but she wanted to leave Larry. Prosecutors allege Larry Miliete murdered his wife on the evening of January 7th, 2021. The next morning, Larry's cellular phone went dead at 6.35 in the morning. Ten minutes later, at 6.45 a.m., surveillance video showed him leaving the house in the family's SUV. He was gone for 12 hours, and his cell phone was shut off for 12 hours. All passive events um, terminated all the way to approximately 6.33 a.m. Um, p.m. on the same day, so an absence of about 12 hours, approximately. Investigators also played surveillance video obtained from a neighbor's house showing somebody burning something in Larry Miliete's backyard fireplace in May of 2021, about four months after Maya went missing. Investigators later found a burnt credit card in the backyard fireplace belonging to Maya Miliete. Toward the end of the day, a DA investigator went through a series of emails sent by Larry to spellcasters. Investigators later seized that SUV that Larry drove for 12 hours that day. They looked at the mileage, they looked at his cell phone tracking from other days, and when he was driving other vehicles, they were able to figure out an estimate that he drove between 400 and 600 miles on the day after Maya went missing. Well, the preliminary hearing included testimony from May's 72-year-old father who said he received a ton of uncanny phone calls from Larry and there was all kinds of odd behavior that he was concerned about. They brought on a co-worker of May's 
who testified that he spoke with Larry, who was accusing May of having an affair with a co-worker, a subordinate. Now, that employee said it appeared to be a misunderstanding in his belief and that he and Larry talked it through and he thought he corrected it. But Larry continued to reach out with these jealous issues. Now, a close friend of May's testified that May was in a deteriorating marriage, in her opinion, and she cited one incident where May reportedly locked herself in her room after discovering that Larry was trying to track her. It's also in this uh, preliminary hearing that police investigators testified about internet searches discovered on May's and Larry's personal computers. One search made from Larry's computer was for subliminal wife training. <laughs> now that was tied to all kinds of wacky revelations around this idea that he was doing spell castings. And then he was placing subliminal messages on a phone under her bed, played inside white noise music in hopes that it might influence May to love him more. And then there were more text messages between Larry and his boss where Larry confided in his boss that May wanted to divorce him. In one particular text that was shown in court, it said, quote, I, from, this is from May to Larry, I don't want to be your wife anymore. I'm filing whether you like it or not. I should have left a long time ago and this time I'm not going to look back and say that again, close quote. Well, talk about building motive for murder. Judge Dwayne Mooring didn't need anything else to convince him that the state had enough evidence to force Larry Miglietti to stand trial for murdering his wife. And that trial is set for September 14th. Larry Miglietti is headed to trial, accused of murdering his missing wife, Maya. It's our top story on The Four. I'm Heather Myers. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Even though there is no body, the judge declared there is enough evidence to put this case in front of a jury. CBS 8's Kelly Hesedal has been in the courtroom since day one. She joins us live now with today's developments. Kelly. That's right, and you know, before that ruling was made, one of the bailiffs got up and stood in between the gallery where Maya's family was seated and the front of the courtroom where Larry was seated just as a precaution. Now, the judge did give a lengthy statement, but he basically told the defense, if I were to believe your theory, I would have to believe that Maya chose to leave behind children she loved, a family she loved, a six-figure income, uh, friends that she truly cared about, a million-dollar home, and then he said this. Based on the evidence adduced during this preliminary hearing, it appears to the court that there is probable cause to believe that the offenses charged in counts one and two have been committed and that the defendant is guilty thereof. It is therefore ordered that the defendant be bound over for further proceedings in the Superior and so it was hard to read Larry's expression when the judge made that ruling that yes, we're going to st you're going to stand trial for your wife's murder. Uh, he blinked, but with the mask on, you couldn't really see much. Larry then agreed to an immediate arraignment, and so that's what happened. He was arraigned and pleaded not guilty to one count of first degree murder and one count of possession of an assault weapon. So this all unfolding after 10 days of testimony from about two dozen witnesses. The prosecution laid out its case. We will have to wait until the trial to see more of the defense's strategy. Now, through this entire hearing, Maya's sister, Mary Chris, and her husband, Richard, have been there in the courtroom every day, seated in the front row listening. They were there yesterday when that video Maya secretly recorded was played of a fight between her and Larry. I asked about what it's been like listening to and finding out all of these details. Take a listen. That my sister had suffered so much. I didn't know that. I wish I could have known. I could probably help her better. But she's very independent. She's very smart. But I wish I could have done something. And as we learned through this hearing, Mary Chris uh, helped raise Maya, so she kind of thought of her like a daughter as well as a sister. Now, the question was asked, what would you say to Larry if you could? And Richard responded, let the truth come out for the sake of the children. Let them know what happened to their mom. The trial is set for September. Heather and Carlo. Kelly, did you have a chance to talk to Larry's defense attorney? What was her reaction to the outcome of this? 
I actually spoke to her over the phone a little while ago, and she told me she wasn't surprised by the outcome. Larry wasn't surprised because the threshold is so low. Uh, but two things did stand out to me from our conversation. One, uh, she wouldn't definitively say that she will absolutely be his attorney when it comes to the trial. And two, I asked, will Larry take the stand in his own defense at the trial? And she said, based on everything she's seen so far, that she believes, yes, he will. She says it was just him and, and the children who were in the home at the time Maya disappeared. So she said she feels that he has to give his account of what happened. Part one of this legal process done. Now it's time to wait and see what happens at trial. Kelly has it all reporting for us live. Thanks, Kelly. So with that in mind, let's go back to my court TV appearance and why I think this video of May's last day at home is so dang important. Now remember my comments about Larry's comments that May left her family to start a new life. I mean, how believable is that as you watch this video combined with all the testimony that came out in Larry Miglietti's uh, preliminary hearing? Now, I'm going to play my court TV appearance and discussion with Vinnie Politan, and uh, we're going to be talking with Mary Chris and Richard, May's sister. This was all surrounding the last day of May's life. How probable is it to you that May would be hauling groceries into the house, enjoying conversation with her kids, or going out to wash her vehicle. In other words, going about her daily routine. If her plan was to leave her family, someone she didn't care about, her job, something she didn't care about, and of course her loving extended family, something that she must not have cared about. How likely is it that she would go to the effort of speaking with a divorce attorney and then suddenly go dark. How likely is it that she'd stop using her social media or her credit cards? Let's watch this exchange on Court TV. The timeline and the uh, surveillance video in the neighborhood, so compelling in this case, and, and from my perspective, tells the story. Um, Maya Miliette's sister and brother-in-law, Mary Chris and Richard Julier, still with us. Also joining us tonight from Park City, Utah, retired police commander and host of the Profiling Evil podcast and the author of Deceived, um, the Zion Society cult, Mike King is with us. Uh, great to see you, Mike. Um, I want to go back to the video now because here, you, as you take a look at this video, you'll see May um, between 2.52 and 3.13. This is a neighbor surveillance camera, and there's the Jeep that she loves so much. And she's walking around. There's nothing, nothing I'm seeing in this video that seems unusual at all. It's just another day um, in this beautiful neighborhood. And it should just be like that, another day. But take a listen. This is around 3.13 at the end of, of this part of the video. You can hear uh, one of Maya's children on the video um, talking about going to the car wash with her mom. Take a listen. Yeah, it's got, it's, it's extremely normal. This is not someone who is about to run away and, and leave her family behind. Give me a break. Okay, so at around 3.20, uh, uh, May gets into the Jeep, gets into the driver's seat, closes the door, and then she's going to uh, drive uh, off. And I guess she's off perhaps to the car wash, right? You get into the car, you're going to go to the car wash, you take a ride. Uh, Mike King, as you're watching this, there's nothing unusual happening here, right? I mean, this is... No, Vinny. This is normal stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. And that's what, I guess, troubles me so much about this. This isn't a mom that wants to leave her family and head off on her own and create a new life for herself. She's having casual conversation with her children. They are absolutely delightful and polite. Can I please go to the car wash with you? And they're having conversation 
And again, they're hauling stuff into the house, out of the Jeep and into the house. That's not the sign of somebody who's packing up and planning on getting out of Dodge. Right. And right now we're watching my coming back from the car wash. This is at 4.42 p.m. And this is it. I mean, she gets out of the Jeep. You're going to see in a second, go into the home. And then this is the key. She is never seen leaving the house again. She stated that she recognized the the children as the uh, Miliete children uh, from previous occasions and also that there are no other small children around that size in the neighborhood and it really struck her the time of day that they were out playing um, with it being so late and that being unusual. Do you recall what time it was that she heard the sound of the children playing? I believe it was after 10 p.m. What was so significant to her about that timing or uh, there were a couple things. One is the just the time. It was a, a school night, so they were supposed to be should have been attending school the following day, whether um, in person or um, you know by computer. But it was a school night, and then also because it was cold outside. Yeah, Mike King. This is the opportunity that they'll have to talk about during the course of the trial, where he's able to be alone in the house. With, with Maya, kids 10 o'clock after 10 o'clock at night out in the backyard playing. Yeah, exactly, Vinny, and I guess that's part of the troubling thing is the change in behavior. It wasn't normal for them to be doing that, and it certainly wasn't normal for them to be out after dark playing in the backyard. What's going on inside the home, and then, of course, what went on all night long until 6 a.m. when all of a sudden the vehicle leaves the home? Yeah, let's get to that. We've got that video. This is 5.59 a.m. on the 8th. And this is where there's activity with Larry's uh, Lexus. Let's take a look. And you can see it's backing up, being repositioned in the driveway closer to the garage area. Again, this is 5.59. 9 a.m. Flash forward 6.43 a.m. to 6.06 p.m. The Lexus exits the driveway and is gone. Take a look. And is gone for 11 and a half hours. 11 and a half hours. And Mike King, this is where he has the story that he took one of the three children to the beach for 11 and a half hours, <laughs> leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's absurd. It's, it's like I said, it's a doozy. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and I don't want to create some kind of wild red herring here, Vinny, but I remember hearing somewhere that some of his reasoning for packing that vehicle into the garage was to load a couple of coolers in. Now, we could theorize all night long on what possibly could have been in those coolers, but the thing that's so important is he leaves for 11 and a half hours and comes back. And I hope we're gonna see during the trial the testimony or at least uh, some example of the testimony of what the children have to say was going on. Cause I think that's where we're gonna really learn some really important information. And you know, I just gotta say to Richard and, and uh, Mary Chris, it is so good to see them, but they are the example of advocacy and they are taking care of, of their sister and boy, I'm sure proud of them. Absolutely. <laughs> well, what are your thoughts on this one, folks? Do you find this video to be more valuable than others might be playing it up to be? I hope you'll put your comments down below. And don't forget to be kind to each other in your remarks. Now, remember, you can find Profiling Evil on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, of course, here on YouTube. And you can also learn more about us at ProfilingEvil.com. It's a great place where you can get our merchandise. You can uh, check out my books. In fact, you can get signed hardbound versions of my book. And if you just want to save a little money and get them paperback, you can get those on amazon.com. Now listen, folks, don't forget about considering our channel memberships. My favorite, it's the academy level. It's a place where you're going to get a whole lot more for just a little bit more and it's a great way for you to support us with a little bit of financial support to help us do what we're trying to do here at uh, Profiling Evil. 
And frankly, if you don't want to be on that monthly uh, academy level uh, payment plan, consider just going to PayPal and and, uh, sending us a donation to help us out. You can find all the links down below, including links to our sponsors. Two of my favorites are Truthfinder, a publicly available source of information about people that we're looking into here on Profiling Evil, and Aura, a digital protection team that looks at giving you protection against your digital footprint so that somebody doesn't take advantage of you on these cyber crime issues. Well, folks, thanks for supporting Profiling Evil. And we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.